This is part three of module three in Word, the textbook project. Uh, we've done the letterhead, which was a part one. Part two was creating the business letter. And now we're going to do the part three. And if you look in our table of contents, creating the letterhead was the first part. 3-3 was creating the business letter. Now we're in 3-4, working with smart art graphics. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to insert a page break because we're going to start on another piece of paper uh, to put in our smart art graphic and the second page of our letter. So we're going to get we're in, the, in the director of admissions and we're going to go to insert pages and page break. And it's going to shift it down. It's going to have a little formatting here. It says page break. And then it's going to put us on a new piece of paper. Okay, now we're going to enter the format text. So we're going to click the home, click on center. Click on bold. I'm going to click on font to make it a 36 font. Font color, we're going to go orange accent to darker 25. So this is a font color. And we're going to go, what does it say? Orange accent to darker 25. This orange accent to, now we're going to go down to the darker section. 25. Okay. And then we're going to start typing. Scroll down so we can see our paper. select the paragraphs to border. In this case, it's the first two lines, so we're going to select these first two lines. And then we're going to click on the borders arrow in the paragraph group, which is this one here. Now we're going to use the very bottom down here, borders and shape. Bunch of different options. Looks similar to the page borders that we've done before. Actually, the tab right here is for page border, but we're on borders here. Okay, let's read the directions here. So your borders and shading, click the box in the setting area. We're going to do a box border. Click the fifth style in the style list to select the border style. So this is one, two, three, four, five, the short dash and the long dash. Then the color is orange accent two. Should be the sixth color again. Jackson two, and then the width of the border it wants it at two and a quarter. So I'm going to drop down and put it two and a quarter, and there it is. Okay. So ours looks like this, and it says to click OK, and then it says click anywhere in the title to remove the selection, so we don't want the the, the word selected. So, to clear the formatting, when you press enter, Word carries the forwarding, any formatting in the location of the insertion point to the next line. So I'm going to hit enter. No correct page. And you see how it took the uh, box again to the next paragraph? Well, we don't want it there. So we hit enter. Now we're going to click on the form, clear formatting button. And when I do that, it clears formatting from just that line. Keeps the formatting for the other lines, but it proves the formatting from that line. So that's what we just did. So now we have our insertion point down here at the bottom. Turn the page. Now we're going to apply a style and enter more text. So with the insertion point positioned below the title, click no spacing style again. Styles, no spacing. And we want to go to a 14 font. So we're going to change this to a 14 font. 
and then we're going to start typing. We're going to put a blank line first, and then we're going to type in we look forward. change that underlying style, select the text to format, the words two days in this case, underline so let's pick the six underline one two three four five six then we want to do an underlying color to the drop down again we're going to put an underlying color and it says orange accent two there we go so we're matching this in color palette that we've been using So you can see that it's under the orange. Okay. Done. Next page. To use the format container button. In the last two words in the next sentence, dress accordingly, we want to still use the same underlying word that we did for underline as the words two days that we just formatted. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a format painter so we don't have to go through all those steps to do the underline and to do the color. I can just select part of the part that we had formatted, which I'm just going to select to. I'm going to click on our format painter, which is this paintbrush right here. I'll click on it. And now I have a paintbrush. See the little paintbrush? So I have my paintbrush and now we want to underline dress accordingly. So we're going to click and drag our paintbrush to paint that formatting one to there. And then now my paintbrush disappears because I've painted it already. Okay. If I wanted to paint more, I'd have to dip the paint in the paint bucket again. The brush in the paint bucket again. And there's another way to make it sticky where it's paint all the time. But anyway, for right now, that's all we needed to do. Dress accordingly. Uh, press the end to position the insertion point at the end of the line. And then press enter twice to put two more lines. Uh, Below the last line on the text, and then save the letter. Save page. Okay, smart art graphics. Now we're going to insert a smart art graphic, and then also here's the format painter that we just talked about. Okay, there's different types of smart art graphics. I'm going to click the plus button so you can see them all. Now there are different ones. You have a list, a process, a cycle, a hierarchy, a relationship, a matrix, a picture, and a pyramid. You can read the purposes if you would like, but they're also defined that way. So when we insert a smart art graphic, it's going to uh, be organized that way. So step one is to insert a smart art graphic. Step two is delete unneeded shapes from the graphic that we don't want. Um, step three is add shapes if we need to, to the smart art graphic that we do want. Then we're going to add text to the different shapes in our smart art graphic. Then the last thing we'll do is add colors, or change the colors, and then if we also want to apply a style, that would be the last step. So let's start working on that. Okay, so, so insert a smart art graphic. With the insertion point on the blank paragraph, click the center button. So we're going to click on our center button, so we'll center the smart art graphic. And then we're going to go to home paragraph. No, I'm sorry. Then we're going to click on insert. 
and then we're going to go to our smart art graphics. It's under the smart art button. Give me a second to find it because I have everything lower. Just make it bigger, quicker for me. Smart art is under our illustrations. Here's the smart art button. You see that? So I'm going to minimize it back down. Find it this way. Smart art is right here. Okay, so insert smart art. It's going to give me my choice. Here are different labels that we were talking about: list, process, cycle, hierarchy, relationship, matrix, etc. So we want to go to the list. So click on the list, and then it's going to find. Now we need to find group list. So we're going to look in through here for a group list. list and we'll click on OK and it's going to do its magic and it's going to insert it where our insertion point is. This is what it's going to look like. This is the text area where we can type in our text. This pane disappears after we're finished with it. Let's move on to the next thing. Page. You can delete shapes from the smart art graphic. Click one of the edges of the shapes that says the word text. In the rightmost group of the smart art graphic to select it. And in this case, it's selected the middle one, so we're going to do the same thing. We click on it, and we're going to hit the delete button. I clicked in the text area here, and you want to click on the border of it, and then hit delete, and that deleted the text. So it wants us to repeat steps one and two to delete the next shape on the right most screen. I'm doing this right. There we go. So what I did was I was clicking up here on this top border, which deletes the whole thing. I needed to click inside the box itself and hit delete. Okay, now we've got it the way it's supposed to look. I have two text boxes. Uh, so here, click in the top left shape, type in date one. shape, this one, and type in check in, nine, block, batch, ten, block, close parentheses, you notice how it automatically resizes everything, click the lower left shape, welcome, we're going to add a shape. Okay, so with the shape in the left group selected, which we do, we're going to click add a shape here. And adds it below. If I did the drop down here, I could add it before or after, but it didn't tell us to click on the drop down and just said click add a shape. So I added a shape here. So now we can type in this one. I'll type in watch. Page. Add more 
shapes and text to this one art graphic. So we're going to go ahead and in the left group still, we're going to add another shape. Lunch after lunch. these recordings because you can imagine how boring it would be to sit here and listen to the teacher talk the whole entire time. Add another Jake to the left group, type dinner. see it because it's too small. Remember, it's also printing it right here so you can see it. Right in the top right group on day two. I'm going to type all this in and then I'll catch you up uh, with the magic. save and print the letter, but we're not really going to save it. I mean, we're not going to really print it. I'm going to go ahead and click the save button. I want to show you how to print it. You go to file and then you go to print. And 
it's going to show you page two and there's page one. So it looks all good. And you can just click the print button after you chose your printer. But uh, the instructor probably won't have you print because it's kind of a waste of ink. And now we're going to enhance the document accessibility. Okay, so we're going to use accessibility checker. So we're going to go back to the backstage for you. Click for, for um, check for issues. Options. Oops, I'm sorry. File information. And then we're going to check for issues. Here. And we're going to click check accessibility. And it's telling us that we're missing some alternative integrity text. Uh, image uh, object is not in line, suggested alternative text. Now, what this is telling us is that people that have sight issues might not be able to read the graphics or hearing problems or sight issues where they can't, can't see at all. Um, they can't see what this chart is, okay? Um, the text to speech will read the text to speech, but when it gets to the graphic, it doesn't have anything to read. So you can put alternative text in here and it will actually read whatever this is saying. So to change that, you click the alt text button in the tools, and then you can add the alt text. So like here we have um, this diagram 5, which is this one, and then we could put in the alternative text here. So we can right click it, and then go down here to, let's forget where it is, but edit alt text. It's not like you click edit alt text. And then we could put in the information here. And we could put like day one and day two schedules. We were using this.